So this morning I have spent a couple of hours joining a number of different groups on Facebook, mostly rescue centres based in Spain and Cyprus, I think one is Romania, and then a couple of other groups for UK charities that support centres abroad. And I was surprised at how many there were, um, and lots of them are saying that they're full, they've got 150, 200 dogs um, and they're full, so it's quite sad really when you think about it. I'm sort of wishing that we lived on a big farm, we could just bring all these pups and give them a forever home, it's very difficult. Um, one of the other things that I've realised from kind of joining these groups and looking around is that puppies are rare, that puppies go fast um, and that they can't travel until they are four months old, which I did not realise. Um, we had really hoped to get a dog, or to get a puppy um, at two months um, and it's just making me a little bit nervous. We really wanted to get them young so that the majority of their life experience was with us in the home um, and not living on the streets or living in a pound. Um, so need to have a little bit of a think on that because all right, if we can get a puppy for four months, uh, which, you know, I think we would be lucky to do, if we can get a puppy at four months, it's only a couple of months older than we were looking at, but it's just it's just not something that I realised, and if there's any kind of delay, then they could end up being six months or eight months, and it's just making me a little bit nervous. It's thrown me a little bit in terms of what I was hoping for. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna think on that. Probably gonna spend no more than another half hour having a quick look and just trying to acclimatise myself with the processes and how it all works and reading and looking at people's experiences of things and hopefully I'll find one or two charities that I can keep an eye on, maybe even fill in the forms and go through the adoption process, I'm not sure, but I do need to think on that form and thing. I need to speak to James um, and just make sure that we're on the same page about it really. So yeah, I will check in with you all in a little while. So I realised that you just saw my face and this is about 15 minutes later so I was having a quick look um, on two of the groups that I had joined um, and in the first group I came across this gorgeous gorgeous grey and white six week old puppy that had been brought in with a litter. They were found in a field um, and he was so beautiful, he was called Paco, he was absolutely stunning. They thought that he would be medium sized, um, obviously he's quite young. So I sent a message to the charity and they almost immediately came back to me and said that they're not accepting any new applications at the moment because of coronavirus, which is obviously a bit of a blow. Uh, and then I went on to this second group and I was just having a scroll uh, and I saw a flurry of posts about a litter of four puppies that have been brought in. They're a little bit older, they're four months old. There's one in particular who's called Harrison, who has caught my eye. Um, so again, I've sent a message to the lady in charge. There were loads and loads of comments on the post, so I'm not holding out too much hope, but it didn't say that they've been reserved, and the last message was from one of the ladies who volunteers for the charity called Monica, basically saying, don't leave a comment here, send me a message. So I've just sent a message saying, what's the process? We're particularly interested in one of these puppies. Um, can you get back to me? She's come back to me almost straight away with just the, some information on the process. So I've come back to her and said, uh, this is the particular puppy that we're interested in. Um, yeah, can we, you know, what do we need to do to progress that? If you're still taking applications, can we apply? What do we need to do? What do we need to know? Et cetera, et cetera. She hasn't got back to me. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try and not frantically check my phone every five minutes um, and see if she's updated. Just walk away. I've inquired. I will try and insert a little clip here actually um, and we'll, we'll see what happens but he's so cute. He's like a white collar. Um, they obviously don't know breed because they were rescued off the streets but they've stayed together as a litter. Apparently mum was there but they weren't able to get more but they've got the puppies, they've brought them in. They were being fed by locals, so they are strays. Although they can't say breed, he definitely has like lab features to me. I mean, it doesn't matter one way or the other, but we will see. I'm very excited. I'm trying not to be excited because I was shot down by this other charity almost straight away, but I am excited. 
So quick update, it's the 7th of June, after a little bit of back and forth between myself and Monica I filled in an application form um, and then I got added into a different Facebook Messenger group with one of the other um, volunteers I think who works in Cyprus, had to take some pictures of the garden etc etc. We have just paid our deposit for Harrison um, so I don't know, I just got a little bit swept up I think, he is so gorgeous um, he's so cute uh, and I know that's not what it is but he just looks so friendly all the video clips that Monica has been sending his little tail is just wagging um, he's the smallest of the litter um, obviously they don't know what kind of size he's gonna be he looks probably like he'll be a medium dog um, as I said in the other um, clip he's four months old now I've just found out from the charity that they haven't had any dogs traveling since the end of March but lockdown restrictions look like they're going to be lifting really soon in Cyprus um, so I do have a little bit of uncertainty in the pit of my stomach because it could be a couple of months I think we're talking about September time so he will be that little bit older but um, what is the reality the reality is that we are rehoming a puppy who otherwise may not have gone to a loving home so very very excited about that we're going to play it by ear now now i just need to chill and calm down um and yeah i will update you when i have more information but we've done it <gasps> well we've set out on the you know we've done the first step to getting it but yeah very very excited so i realize that i look a little bit of a hot mess um it's been a long day but we've just had a message through from Monica and from the charity to say that the puppies are going to be flying um, on the 3rd of July, landing in the UK on the 4th of July, which is actually just two weeks time. Um, they've made an agreement where they should have three vaccinations before they fly. But because of the way that flights are with Corona and everything, what they're going to do is give them two vaccinations and then two weeks after they land in the UK we're going to have to arrange for the third booster vaccination um, which to us is totally fine because it means that he is here, we can pick him up, we can have him uh, and but that's just like no time at all. We haven't even had our home visit yet so probably going to need to chase that up but I saw this message and it basically said they can't fly until they've had the third vaccination we don't know when the next flight will be, we can't get the third vaccination in time for the flights, what are we going to do? Here's a solution and my heart just sank. I don't know if you can tell that I'm actually really excited because I read the first part of the message and thought well that's it then isn't it? You know it could be another six weeks, it could be another eight weeks, who knows? Um, but yeah they've said he can come so I just oh, I need to tell the kids because they are going to be so excited. <laughs> puppies are flying on the 3rd of July which is just over two weeks time the charity weren't sure that they would be able to get a volunteer out to do home check in time to do a home check in time so they asked us to film a house tour and send it over to them and I've just done that but I'm quite paranoid now because they haven't responded um, and obviously our house is not finished we are literally redecorating the front room as we speak um, and yeah it's just a bit I'm just hyper aware that it looks a bit tatty in places and I'm frantically refreshing my Facebook Messenger app every five minutes because now I'm paranoid that we're going to fail. Hello baby. <laughs> I braved the shops this morning or the shop one shop uh, probably my first time in a shop since early March which is just crazy considering we're at the end of June now but I went to Pets at Home to pick up an order for the puppy and to pick up a few other bits and I just wanted to quickly show you what we've got because it's very cute so I'll just flip the camera around I mean probably you could accuse me of going a little bit mad but this is this is what we've got 
Um, so we've actually got two things, if I come over here, excuse the mess of my study. So we're going to be doing two crates, we're going to have a medium crate and an extra large crate. This is a mat for the medium crate which is going to go into our room um, and the puppy is going to sleep in there for at least the first week I would have thought. Um, and then this is his other bed which is going to go in the extra large crate. This is so soft. It's part of the pets at home just for puppy range and it is so so squishy and soft and apparently it's totally washable and it has a reversible cushion as well. Um, so this will go in his extra large crate and the reason for the extra large crate is that he can have his bed, he can have some water and he can move around but he can be secure if he wants to be. Um, obviously we'll leave the door open and encourage him to come out uh, but it's just a large secure safe space for him and then these are the other bits I got so I got um, a little frog uh, which doesn't have a squeaker or anything it's just a soft tie and I bought it because it matches the bed because that is my life um, these two things I got on Amazon um, not gonna lie I paid seven pounds for this bear and I really thought that it was gonna be I thought it was gonna be more like this size um, not this teeny tiny thing i mean it's got different textures it's got the rope legs for chewing but yeah that cost me 6.99 just squeak as well oh side note the reason that we're in the study is because i'm trying to keep this stuff away from pepper so that she doesn't get it first and then another rope toy um which was a similar a similar price this is a little cord doggy um he won't have all these things at the same time by the way we will rotate them then some rope toys um for him another one which I thought was going to be bigger is this one. I really don't think any of us are going to want to play tug of war with a puppy who may not necessarily know the difference between where his rope toy ends and our fingers begin with his pointy little puppy teeth. So I might try and get a slightly longer one um, of those. Um, some puppy poo bags because you know. Um, this is a two in one. This is again is, is part of the um, the camera won't focus part of the just for puppy range we've got the, the metal water bottle and then the grey star um food bowl are you sensing a theme that you know i love all things grey and then um what else have we got a little ball for him to play with and then this i absolutely love this and i feel like a shocking dog owner because it has never occurred to me to get one of these for pepper but this is a treat bag um so obviously it has pockets, zips, mesh, uh, places for you to hang things, etc, etc. But the thing that I'm really excited about, this is so sad, it comes with a whistle and a clicker, which we will use the clicker for um, obedience training and that kind of thing when he is a little bit older. But it comes with this collapsible water bowl and this is what is making me feel like such a bad dog owner because we have never thought to get one of these for Peppa before. We've always just either taken like a metal bowl like this out with us when we're going on a long walk or we tip a bottle and she drinks from it. Um, obviously not a bottle that humans are going to drink from but this is so good. Like why have we never thought to get one of these before? I don't know. Hey James. Hey. What has just happened? We're going to become puppy parents. We have just passed our home check with a week exactly a week to go which is very exciting. <laughs> That is a big relief. Now, all the things that I've bought for him don't need to go back to the shop. What things? So it's Saturday the 27th of June and this morning we were added to our Facebook Messenger fan group chat. So um, the puppies fly from Cyprus to Cologne uh, in Germany on Friday and then they come overland by pet courier um, and they'll be split into different vans depending on whereabouts in the country they're going so we are van three i think um so i'm now in a facebook messenger group with the driver um, so that he can update us so according to that we will be picking him up from a service station not too far away at three o'clock in the afternoon on saturday um obviously that could change it could be later it could be earlier it just depends um but yeah it kind of all feels really real now um it's less than a week it's happening um i'm just very excited um james is busy laying the floor in the living room because we'd like to get that room finished so we can put the crate up before he gets here and uh yeah just just a little update but i am just very very excited This is the 
seconds back. Bye bye babies. This is the first day. with you. Do you think that we're going to put you in a crate? Hmm? What, Megan? So we've got food and water bowl ready, his bed ready. His mate ready? Hello, you. Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Hey. Oh, fun. Yeah, fun.